Imagine you've gone on a midnight hike. I'm sure some of you used to do that in some of our younger days. <laughs> and what happens is you're at the back, especially I would be anyway, and you basically get left behind. So there you are, stranded in the middle of this dark field. Your batteries run out on your torch, you've left your phone at home, and you can't see the other walkers. What would you feel like? Yeah, I think you would. Initially, you might not panic too much, but I think after a while, you'd probably start to think frightened, scared. You wouldn't know which way to go. Were you going in the right direction? Who else was out there when you start hearing the owls hooting and things? And afraid. Not a good place to be in. But then from a distance, you see this tiny pinprick, this tiny little speck of light. And as this light comes nearer, it starts to show you the way to go. Because darkness is dispelled by the smallest amount of light, the smallest light can start to disperse that fear and light up the way and point us the way to go. I am the light of the world, said Jesus. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we continue our preaching series of the I Am Sayings with this theme. Each of these I Am Sayings has given us further insight into the nature and being of God through Jesus Christ, his Son. The I Am, as you'll have heard many weeks before, is rooted in Jesus' relationship with his Father, he became, because apart from Jesus, we live in darkness. The reading we heard from Isaiah was talking about the nation of Israel walking in darkness because they had walked away from their God. They'd walked away from the God who had led them out of Egypt. And Isaiah here was prophesying of the one who was coming, of Jesus, who would bring light back into their darkness, who will bring them direction and purpose back to this nation. And as we know, this prophecy has been fulfilled with the birth of Jesus. And as the sun in our sky gives light to the world, so Jesus gives light to all mankind in the world. Because the light of Jesus radiates further than the sun possibly can reach. It can dispel our fears. It can dispel the darkness. And it can transform our lives as we walk alongside him in the light. We're going to spend a little time thinking about three different aspects of light and see how they actually apply to our lives. The first thing that immediately comes to mind is that light gives sight. The image of the lighthouse beaming out into that dark sea, or the torch that Otto was shining probably at the ceiling and not in the dark places around the church. In the darkness, you can't see what is in front of you. You don't know exactly where you are or where to go. But when a light comes on, be it a candle flame, a street light, the torch on your phone, the surroundings become illuminated and the blackness disappears. Images appear, paths can be seen, the way to go becomes clearer. Dangers can be avoided, and the light leads you safely home. Jesus is the light of the world. Do we know where we're going? Do we know who or what we are following? Jesus brings light to our lives, but only if we invite him to. 
The famous painting, which if I was really good, I'd got you a picture of, the image by Holman Hunt of light of the world, of Jesus standing in this doorway with the light here waiting on the doorstep to be invited in. Jesus in that image, that picture, just stands there waiting. He's not pushing forwards. He's not coming over the threshold. He's standing, waiting to be invited. And the other little um, thing about that picture is, on the side where Jesus is, there's no handle. So the handle has to be opened by the person inside the house. Only we can open the door and invite Jesus to come in to walk with us, not just once, but daily, to walk with us each day. Only we can open up our lives and ask him to come in. But as Jesus' light comes into our lives, it's a bit like the lighthouse shining out onto the sea. It illuminates the dangers and the rocks and the pitfalls that cause harm. And as Jesus' light comes into our lives, it may illuminate things that we'd probably long hidden, longed hope they would stay hidden, past hurts, past sins, stored up anger and fears. But as we let the light of Jesus so shine into our lives, into these deeper corners that nobody else even can see, he brings his love, his healing and his forgiveness. And he surrounds us in his everlasting arms. Only we can let the light of the world into our lives to illuminate the way that we should live and the way we should go. So light brings sight. Secondly, light brings growth. Now, I don't know a lot about gardening, but I know a man who does. <laughs> Of the millions of plants that are still at our old neighbour's house waiting to be transported to our new house this week. But what I do know is, without light, no plants will grow. Because light enables that plant to create its food. And also thinking back to experiments that I'd have done a long time when I was at school, You'd have a plant and it's in darkness and you've got one tiny pinprick of light and the light, the plant would always grow towards the light, even if it ended up a very peculiar looking shape. Plants grow towards the light because they need that light. Jesus is the light of the world. Do we turn towards Jesus to aid our growth? Do we feed on him? In Psalm 19, it says, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Jesus, in the statement from John, promised that whoever walks, follows him will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Do we want to know Jesus more, as the hashtag theme says? Or perhaps sometimes we withdraw from Jesus. We back away from the light into the darkness where we can't be noticed. But Jesus' love and light is there for us all. Jesus' love reaches and touches our lives. His light reaches us even when we don't think we deserve his love or even when we turn our back on him. Jesus is the light of the world, so may we turn towards that light and let it feed us. May we draw nearer so we can grow. Through prayer, reading, pondering the Bible, meeting in groups, talking about our faith, light brings growth. And thirdly, light is a source of power. 
Light is a form of energy. That's as far as my physics goes. But I know it gives power. And in our world, where we're looking for better forms of energy and power sources, sunlight is a source that's being harnessed. We see increasingly solar panels on roofs and fields. Light from the sun will charge batteries, power houses, businesses. The sun generates electricity. We can power cars, buses, and even space stations. That's a lot of power being generated from our sun. Jesus is the light of the world. Do we let the power of the light of the world touch our lives? Do we let him recharge our batteries? Do we let him fill us anew with power and strength? Or do we rely on our own strength and power to get through? I know through personal experience that it is so easy to start doing God's work and getting wrapped up in doing this and that and being really busy with this and that and they're all good things. But basically you get absolutely shattered and exhausted and worn out because you're relying on your own strength, on our own energy, instead of relying on the power, source of all power through Jesus through God, his Holy Spirit. Jesus went back to the Father so he could send the Spirit, so his Spirit could live within us, so his Spirit could empower us and fill us and renew us. His Spirit is our power source to enable us to carry out all the tasks he is calling us to do. And we don't just need filling with the Holy Spirit for one special occasion. We need filling with the Holy Spirit every day so we can walk in the power of his light. Light gives power. Sight, growth, power. All this God gives us out of love. Yet from the Matthew reading, we had another challenge. Because in that... Jesus didn't say he was the light of the world. He said to the crowds, and the same applies to us, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. So if you follow me, if the light of the world has touched your life, then it is your task to take that light out into the world. This isn't an optional extra. You are to share the message of my light. So as we live our lives reflecting the light, it allows other people to see his light in us. As we live out our lives, people will see how we live. Only Jesus can empower us to love. Only his love lights up the world. So may we... Let Jesus, the source of all light, open our eyes and direct our ways. May we be drawn closer to the light so we may be fed and grow in his love. May we be empowered by his spirit so we reflect his light in our lives. I am the light of the world, says Jesus, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen.